Welcome back to another dive. This dive location is called Anfray after the rock with the big uh, marker on with the A on it. That's one scallop down. Wonder how many more I'm going to get. The visibility is pretty good for this time of year. There is a little bit of snot in the water, these little stringy things. This is like plankton. It's uh, gathering all nutrients in the water now it's sunny. They get bigger and bigger until finally they drop out of the water. It looks like a, an inkwell crab pot they're starting to melt. It must be a metal frame one rather than the plastic because they tend to break down. Ooh, what do we have here? This is a cotton spinner cucumber. This is probably the largest one you'd see because they grow to about 300 millimeters long. It leaves a, like a sausage-like trail of digestive sediment in its wake behind its tail. Uh, and when it's attacked it emits a um, stream of sticky white threads. And I'm guessing this is why they call it the cotton spinner. Them uh, little bits of threads that are coming out the back are actually its uh, internal organs. Shoots it from its rear end. So it's quite a big one. Certain places in the world these are uh, a delicacy and you can eat them. Just put my hand next to it, just for a, a, a bit of scale really, so you can see how long it is. As you can see there's very little tide, because my bag is just staying in the same place. What I'm going to do now is just get my orientation. I'm going to look at my compass and I'm going to head in a southwesterly direction. It's 20 meters and I've been roughly four minutes on the bottom. I've got half an hour at this depth, but as I go southwesterly, it's actually going to shallow up. Oh, some more scallops. Around here it's really quite scenic, there's large steep uh, sandbanks between the reefs, this is nice granular sand, it's pretty cool. It's a shame I had an issue with my camera there because I've picked up a few more scallops since you last seen and also picked up something that potentially could be a cannonball. Well, that one's pretty white. Must be very young still. I don't know if the colour of the shells are affected by the type of seabed that it's around. You tend to get on nice clean white sand, you need you tend to get nice clean white shells. All these are too small. Far too small. It might just be a coincidence in the darker, dirtier sand they actually pick up the contaminants from the sand and they turn the shell black, but some nice clean white ones around here. dogfish check out the colorations on it it's got larger black spots and smaller black spots
this one looks quite easy to see its age As you can see the different rings almost like growth rings on a tree that's it down to 120 that's half a tank so I think I'm gonna have a little look around here and then I'm gonna start heading up Check out how heavily weighted the bag is, the net looks like it's been pulled really taut. Also I can feel there's quite a bit of weight on the reel, but I've got two buffs on the surface and that's more than enough buoyancy to keep it up. I love it when you look up at the sun and you see the rays coming down through the water. Ah, oh, we're back on the surface. Had an issue with uh, an error with the GoPro that I've never seen it before. It said cold battery, battery at zero degrees or something. Teeny's in the water now. Oh, well, still got 79. Bad. Is that a cannonball or is that not a cannonball? That's not bad for one of the latest farmers we can ever done. I don't know if that is or not. <laughs> Do you reckon that's a cannonball? That's a weird shape. Pick it up. Oh wow, well, that's quite heavy. I'm surprised you <laughs> reeled that up, to be honest. <laughs> it is it, heavy, but I wouldn't have reeled that up. Yeah. Oi. I don't know if that is or not. It might be. There's Ross there. Um, yeah, I don't know, actually. Nice. Debris. Smash it and find out. Smash I'm, it. Actually, actually, I'm going to change my stance to say it is. Do you want to whack it open? Not really, because they're filthy. You could uh, no, put no, my gloves on. I'll put it, put it. Go on, then. I'll smash it. Matt's going to smash it open. Clear a bit of room. Uh, it's a bomb! <laughs> what, well, one of the big animals? Yeah, they're for you, it's pointy teeth! I suppose technically cannibals are bombs. Ready? Yeah. Go! Oh. oh, I hate that sound. What? Gas. <laughs> oh, gas. Smash the back off first. Oh, it's a cannibal. Hey. It's a cannibal. Hey, that's oh, a nice that's little one. one. It's a little oh, one. I want, I want. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find Boy, it. Why is there a second piece to it? Yeah, why is there a second piece? Might be a twin. Might just be concretions. It's another bit of metal. It's another metal of some sort, yeah. Whatever it is. Maybe it's just concretion. It's tip geez, I've never seen it that big before. Oh, yeah. oh I don't know, it's just it? Oh maybe. Might have been, might have been a, uh, a blind or one that's already blown up. That's quite a cool little cannibal that that's one. That's lovely, that's it's a, it's a, that looks like a scallop shell. Oh it is a scallop shell. Oh yeah it is. Well, yeah, oh, it Fossilised. One of the prehistoric ones where they used to be made metal. <laughs> the trilobite. <laughs> like in Keeney's day. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, eh? That's full of salts, though. Look at it, look. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a perfect scallop shell. If you want to make, I want to make a, I want to make a pyramid a little one. Yeah? <laughs> That's a feel how heavy that is compared to what was there. Oh yeah, blimey. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, yeah, well, the, the, oh my god! Oh <laughs> no! This is a. Uh, they make cannibals that night. That's going to be a three pounder, I reckon. Anyway, we'll give that a little wash and a little bit of soap. But it's not exactly round that one. It's lost a bit of uh, lost a bit of stuff on that. That's oh, nice. But that All about stinks. That. Yeah. Oh well, that's a nice one. Oh, cheers. Alright, just gonna uh just gonna yeah, size mine now. You could have that on Paul if you want it, mate. Sure. Yeah you can have it, yeah. 
Yeah, we can have that one, lover. Ah, oh, little pyramid. <laughs> I just need a cannon. You just need a cannon now. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to get many cannons. We know where there's cannons, but we're not going to lift them. They're of historical importance. Yeah, there's a few there. Not many. Yeah, I think I think he should. Scallop sorted. Thirty-six for me. That's a 46 footer, I think. Is it a 46 footer? At anchor over there with nine people on board, broken down. Requires a tow. I sent Richard would be going to get Margaret and tell her. Don't tell Keeney. He knows. He knows about it. That was just an update on Channel 20. It's being towed. No, it's at anchor. It Bob requires a tow. He's bobbing. He's bobbing. Let's go pick him up. That boat's at anchor at the moment with nine people on board. Near Bar Bay. Yeah. Over there. Out of fuel? I'm not sure who's out of fuel, but embarrassed, I'm I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, right. Maybe an overheat or something like that. Uh, he lost power. Oh he lost power, maybe. He lost power, it's normally like a jungle juice. Especially when she's a diesel. <coughs> you gonna go and tow it in? Maybe. Yeah, some diesel. You guys want another dive? Yes. Yeah, cement wreck. So how many is Keeney got, do you reckon? How many you got, do you reckon? What? How many scallops? Uh, I've got quite a few smalls. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, a lot of the sort of just size stuff. You done your ten dozen? No, nine. Oh, nine dozen. Two spiders. It's better than my three dozen. Pictures. Decent bag. We're heading now towards where that 46 foot boat uh, broke down. We're going out over here to dive on probably the most popular shipwreck dive in the Channel Islands. Every diver you ever chat to is like on oh, a cement wreck. Yeah, we done that. Because they do it for their um, their advanced training, their deep dive. A bit like the Fissile Gorm, as I do, is sitting upright in 30 metres of water, which for a diver is perfect. Oh, chocolate! <laughs> Mate, I haven't got anything. I haven't got anything. Do you want something? See if I can get you a scallop for real.
just coming down now to about 26 meters where Matt's tied the shot line into the port side gone on by the looks of it and we're in the hold which is towards the stern of the ship um, we didn't really have a plan for this dive it's just drop in the water and do whatever you want really uh, my plan was to just have a little look around the seabed and see what sea life's on it I'm a little bit disappointed with the amount of snots that's in the water at the moment but you can't have it good all the time so here we go off the side of the boat heading towards the, to the bow can see Paul's just about to go into the forecastle. So the forecastle's the bit at the front of the boat. This is where the accommodation would have been. Uh, look at this. This is typical of spider crabs on shipwrecks. They tend to climb these little spikes and try and get as high as they can. Probably filtering the water of all the nutrients. This is one of the heads, which is a toilet on a boat. And we just see Paul heading, the compa heading inside this companionway now. Just checking out, because normally below this, it's good and there's a big conga, but not today. You can now see all the plates have come off the side and it basically leaves the hulk of the shipwreck basically is it looks like a rib cage it's got a really eerie feel about it is actually quite high risk doing this going inside this boat so I'm just waiting around to make sure Paul gets out okay and the quick make a quick dash around the front here you can see an old bollard a drum with some cable on this is a bit of a titanic moment this is the right on the extreme bow of the boat and this is the anchor winch which lifts the two anchors either side and check out this ras it's a ballon ras really weird bland collars on them This is why I've kept my lights off. Check out this. Reminds me of going into outer space. This is the basically the plankton and the bloom that you're getting. But after a few weeks it should become so big, fat and heavy it drop out. So yeah, let's keep the lights off for today. Yeah, it's cuckoo ras, let's follow it. where it's got its nickname from this is a bag of cement this would have been for building all the uh, forts and bunkers in Guernsey during the Second World War when this shipwreck was first found they seen the bags of cement in it and that's how it got its name but later as uh, as people done a bit of research they found out it was a used philandering this is someone with a lazy shot this is divers chucking down a 619 block instead of using an anchor and all they do is just cut the line at the end very lazy Here's Matt giving me a wave. Now, I know on this shipwreck there is uh, a lot of guns, and this is one of them. This is one of the gun bases. So, this would have been on top of all the cement, or possibly amongst the cement. So, there's, you see a three or four, maybe five of them on the shipwreck. 27 meters, 
I haven't got much longer left, so we're heading back towards the shot line now. This is a midship um, with the winch. Here's another gun base, just laying on its side. This is the uh, winch for the steam uh, derrick, and this is the base. Because it was a dot ship and it uh, was going to Holland and there was low bridges, they used to be able to drop the main mast so it could go under these low bridges. This is it here, actually extended up. This is the base, that's all that's left. The actual mast itself is laying across these rear holds. Um, you should be able to see more bags of cement. A lot of it's now crumbled into rocks. And there's also another heavy gun that's rolled out the side. And this one is probably one of my favourites. There's two with still the barrels and everything on. This is always a really good hidey hole for a conga. Let's see if there's one in there today. Yep, you just see it's snout. Very shy. They're not scared of divers and they're not scared of lights, but um, when they uh, you cast a shadow over the top of them, they don't tend to like it. So you can see here, this is the uh, folded down mast. You can see the ends of it. And this is it here laying down. There's actually a, quite a big conga laying inside. So basically it's just above these blokes heads, this, this um, I suppose, base with some shackles on or some sort of eyelets. You can see it's just, just here. I think it's cracked in half and there's a big conga living in it now. Now we're up and over to where the wheelhouse would be because um, they're made out of timber, it's obviously long rotted. We met up with Paul again, so now we're over the stern area. So this is where the galley and everything would have been. Also the engine room. Paul's not going inside this one. Um, I don't tend to go inside the shipwreck at all really. Um, I've been known to go in in the engine room and swim through the companionway and up the stairs but uh, normally it's sort of one at a time in there so it looks like Matt's already down inside there having a look around you know some of our um, hand movements our hand gestures or body language between us divers seems like we're sort of Neanderthals or cavemen but Believe me, we know what we're telling to each other. We've been doing it long enough. This is right on the stern. This is the steering quadrant. And there's also a couple of boxes and uh, breathers and vents and some bollards and some hatchways. And this huge windlass. So as we swim towards the front of the ship again, down towards our, uh, our shot line, which is tied to the stern on the port side, I'm just going to put my head inside here and have a look down this ladder. Yeah, it's a bit silty today. I don't really want to go in that. I didn't really look at this very well, but I've noticed this like hair that grows all over it. Today it's actually like little worms or sort of little fan things feeding. I've never really noticed that. I've always noticed at certain times of year it gets very furry. This is the top of the funnel, what would have been the funnel, and this is looking down through the skylights into the engine bay with the crane on a rail which runs through the middle. Uh, you can't see the engine because it's all silted out. This ship's been sunk for 79 years so there's silt literally everywhere. Coming to the end of the dive, my uh, time limit, I've got four minutes left. This is my new no decompression limit. So I could stay down longer, but I don't want to go into deco. Loads of air left, 150. Just trying to get a bit of footage of Matt film in the conga. So this one, we've been down a couple of times to hand feed it. So you can check back on some of my old videos. And cat gut, try and clean that up. I'll take that with me. So 
as we come to the end of our dive, what we end up doing is sort of congregating around the shot line and just wait for each other. Um, we've got loads of time, really. We've already pre-agreed that I'll be untying today. Now untied the rope from the shipwreck now and we're basically taking our time to go up. You notice the tide is starting to pull now. We've actually used up the slack water time uh, which we planned. That's how we get to know about our, uh, when we're going to dive the shipwreck. We plan it over the slack water. With zero minutes, no decompression limit. That must quickly increase as I um, go up towards the surface. Me and Paul just waiting to do our safety stop. So it's three minutes at five meters. This hasn't got nothing to do with decompression really. This is um we it's recreational diver, we can go straight to the surface. We don't need to do a um a decompression stop, but what we're doing is a safety stop. Um it's just how we've been trained and the safest way to do it. Check the top right hand corner, safety stop complete, let's go. Tend to take my time even slower the last couple of meters. That's good eh? Bit snotty but it's good. <laughs> Shipwrecked on this day. I'm not too sure that it does actually count. Though. Yeah, well. It's a maritime mishap. Ooh, a maritime mishap. Is that what happens when you uh, smash a rock? <laughs> That's a minor issue. It can all be buffed out. Minor maritime mishap. Get the gaff ready. With a touch of luck, this weather continues, but I don't think it is because uh, this Saturday we've got a northeasterly wind coming, so we might lose a bit of the sun. But thanks for coming along again, and we'll catch you on the next tide. <laughs>